Um, before I get started, um, let me just uh, point out a few people. I have one of my offspring here with me, so Stefan, if you just want to wave. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I brought a big gun because, you know, I'm uh, starting my journey with AWS, but um, a friend of mine, Craig, he works for Amazon, so any question I cannot answer, I'm sure he will be able to do that. Um, and uh, that's the rest of the, the, the family. So um, I pointed out Stefan, you know, he's the one on the left, and that's me on the right, and then my other son, Josh, and my daughter, and my wife. And uh, we live the, love the countryside, <laughs> so we live way out west on a piece of property, and we're living my wife's dream. She loves horses, so I'm funding her addiction. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and that's the cool thing about the in internet technology is you can live and work anywhere. Yes? Okay. Um, what we're going to cover today, first of all, let me do a bit of a check in terms of knowledge. Uh, who has never logged into the AWS console? Okay, good. Who has logged in and deployed thousands of AWS instances. <laughs> Craig, yeah, you should raise your hand. Okay, one. Uh, one instance. Okay, good. So this is not a deep dive, you know, going into AWS. This is really getting people to understand what AWS is all about and how to spin up WordPress. I'm going to show you two ways. Um, I'm a little bit bummed that the screen is so uh, cramp, but I'm sure we can get through that. So I'm going to show you two ways to do that. Um, we, AWS is really phenomenal for high availability and also allows you to very rapidly scale um, your environment. So a lot of the people in, you know, um, at WordCamp, they're pretty, probably, probably pretty good with having WordPress on a shared host somewhere, but if you need more horsepower, and you want to be able to scale your WordPress site very quickly, then AWS is a great place to do that. I'm not going to go into, you know, cloud wars, you know, AWS versus Azure or Google or Rackspace or whatever. This focus is on AWS. We are also not in this session going to set up, you know, S3 and CloudFront and talking about caching. Um, but if we have some time at the end and people have questions about that, um, we can do it. So we're going to do a quick overview of what AWS is all about, and then we're going to jump in and have some fun doing live demos. Live demos, who's done live demos? Uh, that's always uh, scary. Um, we had the workshop Friday, um, and uh, we provide 100, provided 180 WordPress instances on AWS for the, for the beginner's workshop. And it actually went well. The internet was a bit spotty, but the performance of the WordPress sites were pretty good. OK. Um, who uses Netflix? Who's got a Netflix account? OK, so then you are running AWS, because I, Netflix runs on AWS. I mean, the AWS story is actually a pretty interesting story, because um, it was a bookseller, yeah, Amazon, and at some point they realized, well, we need a pretty substantial infrastructure to run our little bookstore online. And they started developing technology to be able to very rapidly deploy changes to, uh, to Amazon.com. Um, and at some point they realized, but we have a lot of capacity. Let's make it accessible to other people and start selling you know, these services to other companies. So uh, about 10 years ago, that started happening. And now many, many large companies and smaller startups are running on Amazon Web Services, AWS. So Dropcam, Airbnb, Slack, you know, I'm sure almost all the services that you touch on the internet has some interaction with AWS. And if you really start to research what's going on, you know, that's a very intriguing story. Um, and I think they caught a lot of the big technology companies off guard because a bookseller, <laughs> you know, <laughs> providing technology, it doesn't compute um, because they're way ahead of Google, Rackspace, 
Microsoft is probably the only cloud provider that's close in terms of what they provide. Um, so just a very um, interesting story. And then it's a, it's a full platform. Uh, it's actually a little bit overwhelming. I'll show you a screen just now. Um, but anybody can use it. Um, you, if you have a credit card and you sign up, you can use the service. Okay, let's uh, <laughs> quickly touch on a couple of um, AWS services. So as you can see, it's extremely, uh, there are lot, lots of services. And uh, I would lie if I say I know, you know each of these. Um, most of you are familiar with S3. So if you, if you want to back up your WordPress site, there are a lot of plugins that provide backup facilities to S3. So most people are familiar with that. So that's a durable um, object store in the cloud. Um, EC2 is what we're going to focus on, um, Elastic Compute Cloud. That allows you to store or to spin up uh, virtual machines in the cloud very quickly. And we'll be doing, I'll, I'll be showing you how to do that in, in two cases. Um, CloudFront is the Amazon content delivery network. Um, has anybody used CloudFront as a CDN? Okay. Um, RDS is also a very cool service. Uh, one of our sponsors, Deep SQL, they provide a similar service. But this is um, a service that allows you to run a database without having to worry about managing updates, backups, you know, high availability. Uh, it's a very cool service, and you can run MySQL, um, Oracle. SQL Server, and then Amazon provides their own MySQL compatible database called Aurora um, that's very fast, 10 times faster than MySQL. Um, so that's a, if you start to think about high availability and WordPress um, for much larger organizations, you want to have a, um, a managed database server service. Route 53, that's your DNS, that's where you can uh, these days, you can actually register domains with Amazon, and uh, you can also use the DNS um, for your own domains. CloudWatch and CloudTrail, those are two services that allows you to monitor your, uh, your Amazon instances. And uh, if something goes wrong, you can get an alert on your, on your phone, SMS, email, um, all kinds of endpoints, but you know, typically email and SMS. And then, uh, you know, uh, interesting how things are uh, happening around enterprise applications, but recently <coughs> Amazon also announced WorkMail, so obviously a competitor to Gmail and all the other email services. So um, do you guys use that internally, Trey? <laughs> no comment. <coughs> Okay, so let's jump into some fun WordPress stuff. <laughs> uh, who has uh, just an Amazon.com account where you buy stuff from Amazon? <laughs> okay, maybe I should ask who doesn't have <laughs> an Amazon.com account. <coughs> okay, good. Um, so if you have an Amazon.com account, you can use that. There's a few extra steps that you have to perform. Um, so to be able to set up an AWS account, you can use your <coughs> Amazon.com account. But then you have to provide some more information, you know, uh, contact information, address. And uh, you have to give your, them your credit card because Amazon services, Amazon uh, AWS services are billed by the hour. Um, they send you an invoice at the end of the month. They didn't bill you as you use it. But um, still, you have to provide your credit card. And they will, uh, you can say how they verify you, they can call you or send you an email and then you have your um, AWS account. It's actually pretty easy to set it up. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to show you two ways to spin up um, WordPress, the easy way and uh, then a little bit uh, harder way just for the fun of it. So. Um, Let's jump into the easy way. Um, in AWS, there's a, a place called the Marketplace. 
like an app store. The marketplace is where companies provide prepackaged virtual machines. So Bitnami is one company that provide a prepackaged um, server, um, and it includes LAMP stack. Anybody knows? I mean, LAMP stack, uh, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Um, so they package all of that already for you, pre-configured, and then they also put WordPress on top of it. So in this case, we're going to go into the marketplace, you know, go through a couple of steps and click launch, and it will spin up a LAMP stack with WordPress on top of it for you. So uh, let's do that. And uh, I'm going to jump to my AWS environment. Now, I thought it would be a little bit larger. Let me just see if I can change the screen size. Are you? Um, almost looks like my iPhone. <laughs> hmm. Better? Okay. So uh, in this environment, let me go back to the dashboard quickly. Um, you can see we still have the 180 instances we spun up for the, for the workshop on Friday. So how do we do this? So I've got a big blue button, click instance. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because it takes about five minutes for the instance to spin up. So while that's happening in the background, I'll slowly, slowly walk you through what we did. So uh, there's the AWS Marketplace. You just search for WordPress. And uh, we're going to pick this prepackaged Bitnami um, package and uh, just click Select. Um, as soon as you sign up with Amazon, you get a free tier. So we're going to use the free tier, which is a, it's a OK um, configuration for WordPress. Um, everything in, in Amazon um, will be added to a virtual private cloud, so all the security that you need is already pre-configured for you. So I'm just going to click on Next. You get 10 gigabytes of SSD storage um, included, so I'm just going to do Next. And I'm going to give this a name so that we can, um, we can get it later. I'm just going to save it. No, I mean, uh, let's do. Okay. The other thing that's really good about this is they pre configured your security so that you have ports um, 80, 443, and 22 open. Those are the ports that you, you need for your web server to work and to SSH into your environment. And we click review. I'm not going to look at this for now, we'll get back to it. You do need to download an SSH key. And uh, I already have one, so I'm not going to download one. I'm going, just going to pick the one that I've already downloaded. And then magic happens. <laughs> this, is, this is really cool. So now in the background, um, Amazon is provisioning all the resources needed to spin up a LAMP stack and then to put, you know, it will pull WordPress from the latest archive and it's busy building um, that instance for us. So I'm just going to go back to this screen. And uh, it is running. Uh, you can see it's pending, so it's busy you know, provisioning that server. Um, Amazon is split up into regions. So if you on the East Coast, typically you will pick the East Coast region, it means your server will be provisioned in a data center in somewhere <coughs> in, in Northern Virginia. As I mentioned, you, you go to the marketplace and you, you search for WordPress. Um, we picked the uh, WordPress powered by Bitnami H, uh, HVM um, instance. And uh, 
it's already got everything you need to, to, to run WordPress. Um, as I mentioned before, there's a free tier that you can start with. It's enough for most WordPress um, installations. And then um, Amazon does a really a lot of work for you. In the old days, you had to configure all your security yourself. Now they give you a default, what's called a VPC, virtual private cloud. So all the security is already provided for you. And you, can, you don't have to, you can read this if you want to, but you can just uh, select you know, next. Um, as I mentioned, you, uh, you actually get up to 30 gigabytes of free tier for a year storage um, with Amazon. Um, we just selected 10, that's fine. Um, the next time we're going to do this, I'm going to show you how you open ports. Um, what I really like about AWS Amazon is that they provide, their philosophy is everything is closed. You have to um, explicitly open certain ports. Uh, that's a little bit different than the traditional Linux world. Traditional Linux is fairly open and you actually have to close stuff to make it secure. Um, Amazon starts off by saving, saying everything's closed. Um, you open up what you need. So again, this is a pre-configured environment, so they already opened port 80 for us. Everybody knows what you need, why you need port 80. That's where you run HTTP, your web browser. And then port 443, that's HTTPS. And then if you want to access the server itself, you typically use FTP or SSH. And uh, that's port 22. Um, be sure when you download the key that you store it in a place where you can get it, because if you don't have that key, you can't access you know, the back end. And then you click Launch. So let's, uh, let's go back and see what's going on on the Amazon side. So the instance is already up and running. It's initializing. I'm also going to. Uh, add, um, I'm going to connect an el elastic IP. That's like a dedicated IP, because with Amazon, you can actually stop your instance. But if you stop it, the IP that it um, allocates to that can go away. But with a, if you connect an elastic IP, you'll always, you'll always be able to connect using that IP address. So uh, let's go to elastic IPs. This is all very easy. Click on allocate. Yes, I want to allocate. That's the IP that it provided. Um, you know, being in the hosting world for many years, um, this is too easy. <laughs> it's like, this is, this is uh, but there's a lot more to it. I mean, Amazon is like a big box of Legos. Um, and the way you put those things together to build something, I mean, there's still, you have to think about it. So they make certain things easy by giving you the blocks. Um, but there's still a lot to be done to make it work well. Um, so we want to associate that um, address to our the instance that we just launched. And that's the one. Associate. And that's it. So uh, if we go back to our instance, um, it's all done. So uh, let's find the IP address. That's the... IP address that we just allocated. And let's open another browser tab. <coughs> and there you have your WordPress instance. Um, there's one step that's kind of tricky that Bitnami, they, they provide it in their documentation. But obviously, how do you, how do you log into, into your WordPress instance? Um, and uh, the user, they always use user, which is better than admin. It's not, not the greatest, but they use user as the username. And this is a good trick. So to be able to find your password for WP admin, you go to your instance. You click on actions, um, instance settings, and then you go to your system log. And if you scroll way to the bottom, That's your password. So again, if you don't know this, it's like, where do I find this password?
password. And uh, you uh, think you have, there's a, yeah, I think you have to do the right click copy. So let's go back to our WordPress password and there we go. Easy enough. And um, all the slides will be available afterwards, obviously, on, uh, uh, on the website. So if you want to follow along, you can do that. OK, so now, any, let, me, let me quickly pause there. So there's this slide with the information about how you get your password. Before I move on to that, any questions? Yes. Machine you mentioned is that that's just setting up uh, one WordPress site for that IP. Is there, is there a version that um, that allows you to use virtual hosts to set up multiple? Um, I'm not sure about that. I mean, you can the, go to the marketplace, search through it, but that one is for a single instance. Um, I know it's for Linux stack. If we wanted to configure. Uh, this is what I'm doing next in the harder way. Okay. yeah so uh, that one is sort of everything is out of the box provided for you um, let me quickly I'll show you now I just want to, want you to say again the name of the service for domain registration through route 53, route 53. yes Some of those pre-configured, they'll show you when you look at the marketplace. They'll show you pricing. This one is free. So you don't pay for the Bitnami service. Uh, obviously, you'll pay for the Amazon resources that you use. Yeah. Um, OK, so uh, that was the easy way. So for people that are a little bit more adventurous and for you that want to do your own stuff, this is the way. So what I'm going to do in this one is to build your server stack and then um, through SSH um, install WordPress on that. Um, I'm going to use Amazon provides a very solid Linux distribution. So um, I'm going to use that. So we're going to launch an EC2 instance with Amazon Linux. Again, associate an elastic IP so that you can start and stop your instance without losing you know, your, um, your IP address. Um, always after you install a Linux environment, you have to update it. We're going to launch Apache. If you want Nginx, you can do that. Um, then we're going to install and configure PHP and MySQL. Sounds like a lot, but it's a couple of commands, and I'll provide them. So, And then we're going to install, configure, and launch WordPress. So part of this is you sort of see how the sausage gets made. Um, <laughs> You know, so this is what hosts typically do. Um, not all of it. I'm not going to give all my secrets away, but you, you, can, you can get a sense of what's going on. OK, so let's jump back to our, um, our console again. And by the way, a lot of this you can do through a command line as well. The console is pretty solid. Some Amazon uh, people don't like to use the con console, but it's it's a really easy way to to uh, to start um, or to do your work in Amazon Web Services. Um, so your your question about you know Engine X, I'm pretty sure. I mean, we can do a quick quick search. I can never remember how to use. In, is that how you spell it? Yep. Um, so they are, you know prepackaged um, instances that you can use, or you can just you know, install Linux and then add Nginx on top of it. I was going to ask, um, I saw there was um, Red Hat and um, Susie. What's the advantage of using um, Amazon's Linux versus the other? It's your preference. Um, I think the Amazon one is based on, do you know, Craig? I can't quickly see it here, but um, it's, it's based on some distribution. I mean, it's really your preference. And, and Red Hat 
Cent CentOS? And Red Hat. And Red Hat, okay. So in this case, we're starting from scratch. So we're going to start by installing Linux, and we're going to use um, Amazon Linux, obviously. So you saw this before. You know, the next step is to configure your um, virtual private cloud, and then you add your storage. Let's give it a key again so that we can remember. And uh, typically, I mean, you would add things like app. You know, you give it tagging means it's ways to uh, identify it later on. So, you know, this is typically what we would do is we'll say WordPress. And if it's a, um, you know, the environment, dev, you know, just to, to give an idea of um, how you use that instance. OK, yeah, we have to add a few things. So, and the other one, it already pre-configured all the ports that you needed. Um, with Linux, they by default open port 22, but we also want to open port, which port do we want to open? OK, so they make it easy for you. They don't, you know, you just click HTTP, and there's that port, and then uh, HTTPS. And that's that port. Both ways. What about, like, uh, you can do that as well. But for the, you know, for my example, yeah, it's just uh, for uh, for a website. So if somebody were set it up, they have problems with getting email out. They have to open ports, you know, all those ports. Yes. So again, if you remember, I already have a key, and we, I'm going to show you how my, I'm using that key in this instance. If you don't have a key, create one in this step. It will download. But let me launch this instance so that it can start doing its magic. Again, every time I hit that launch button, it's, it's almost like sending a space shuttle to somewhere. <laughs> do you still get a kick out of that, Craig? You, don't, you do it through the command line, so I'm sure that you don't. So uh, you can see it's pending, so it's starting to spin up the, the Linux um, server. So let's get, go back to our presentation. So we've done uh, the first step. We've uh, launched a an, an, uh, server with uh, Linux, um, Amazon Linux. Um, as soon as that server is up, we can associate it with a Elastic IP. Then we're going to update um, Linux. And like I say, install Apache, PHP, MySQL, and WordPress. Um, I do want to focus on that again, so be sure when you install Linux, be sure to open the ports so that you can access the browser. The, the, the good thing is if you forget, you can go back and open them later. Um, it's not like if you don't do it. Uh, but even if you don't do it, the really cool thing about Amazon is if whatever you did didn't work, shut it down. You know, just terminate it and start over again. Again, in my world, it used to be you build a server you know, there's a machine, you can actually feel it, you build the server, you put software on top of it, you flip the switch, you hope it runs. If it runs well, you don't touch it. Um, this is a completely different environment. You know, you can, you can plug and play very easily and you don't have to think about, you know, um, throwing away, they talk about throwaway instances. So if something didn't work, just throw it away and you can start again. OK, let's see what's going on on this side. Um, so it is, it's running. And uh, I think at this point, we can associate our, eh, let's not do that for now. So the way you find out how to connect to that um, instance is there's a, there's a button next to Launch Instance. You click on that. And then it provides you with exactly how you can access SSH into that instance. So the first step is. And I've already done this, but I'm going to do it again. But you need to change your uh, file permissions on um, this key is the key that you use to SSH into your instance. So let me open my terminal window. Um, so let's just make sure I know where I'm at. I think I need to be Dropbox. This is my.
so you can see my keys. So let's just make sure the permissions are set for that file. Well, there she is. And if this is freaking out you out at this moment, good. Um, but it is a lot of fun, and all the steps are um, included. I would really encourage people that have never done this before try it. You know, you'll kind of get addicted to it, so be careful. Um, <laughs> but then again, Amazon makes it really easy. It gives you exactly the the command that you need to run to access that server. So I'm just going to copy that, paste it in my terminal window. Yes. Uh, yes, and now we have access to our Amazon Linux um, server running in the Amazon cloud. So, and again, they make it easy. I'm going to go through these set of commands, but the first thing we have to do is to update um, update our Linux instance with all the latest packages, and the command you use for that is yum. So it pulls all the packages that it needs from the different places to update your um, Amazon Linux instance. Uh, you don't. No, you do. <laughs> Sorry, you do have to use sudo for that. So this is the step that takes the longest because it's basically looking at all the packages that you have on your Linux server and getting the latest versions um, and updating them. The next step we're going to do is to install and start Apache. Okay, so how do we get to super user mode? It's okay, so now we're in super user mode. And uh, same command, yum, install, and Apache. So now it's pulling Apache from the server and installing it. Um, but to be able to access your web server, you need to actually start that service. Let me ask you this. So people that have just never done any Linux commands that have a website running, do you have a little bit more appreciation for what hosts <laughs> do? <laughs> um, but it's cool. OK. so. Uh, Let's uh, attach uh, Elastic IP to this instance. And again, the way you do that is you go to Elastic IPs, allocate a new address. Yes, I do want to allocate the new one. And now I want to associate it with that um, Linux instance that we have running. And what did I, WP2, yep, that's the one. So let me ask you this. How would I know that I've correctly configured Apache? How would I be able to test that? OK, so yes. So we have the IP here. So let's copy that. And if we paste it, we should see, we should see, ah, yeah. <laughs> so, so that means we have. Um, Amazon Linux running. We've started the Apache server. Um, so what else do we need to run WordPress? We need MySQL and PHP and then obviously WordPress as well. But this is a good way to test. So at least we know our server is up and running. We've installed Apache and it's up and running. Um, so we head back to our terminal. And uh, by now you're probably familiar with uh, uh, you're probably familiar with everything working, but it's not. Huh, this is interesting. My terminal just died. Oh, well, let's start again. Um, is that better? OK, so again, we have to SSH into that one, I think. Let me just make sure that's the one. Uh, I'm going to go back and just get that URL again, because I 
I've obviously done this many times, so I don't want to do the wrong one. Okay. Uh, permission denied. Wonderful. Uh, I. Maybe refresh the page to get the new computer. Yeah, you've, as you've assigned an elastic IP, so you need to connect to that. Well, I'm using the uh, the DNS. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's get back. So I'm back into my um, Amazon server. I use the DNS, so I mean, I, if you have the DNS, you don't have to reference the IP. As to Amazon, we can discuss it afterwards. <laughs> okay, so uh, um, again, we've installed um, Apache, we've uh, Linux, Apache, and now we need to install um, MySQL and PHP. And all of this is in my slides, so you guys can benefit from all the hours and hours that I put into okay. creating this for you. Um, so again, these commands are a little bit boring, and but we have to go through them. So we now we um, installing um, MySQL, and then we need to start the MySQL service. And after we've started it, we need to create a database for our um, WordPress. Um, everybody knows that WordPress runs on a database, so you need a MySQL database. Um, so let's create the user and the database. So I'm going to call mine WCATL blog. And then there's also a really nice command that allows you to secure MySQL because obviously it's a very important database. So set root password, yes. Do you want to know my password? I don't know my password. <laughs> yes. And then the rest is just yes, yes, yes. Very easy. Um, my password's in my slides, so you can get it. <laughs> what, do we need, what do we need to do now? Now that we have... Uh, yes, so now we have to get WordPress. And uh, um, Apache servers, you know, you have to install WordPress in your um, home directory, and the home directory for Apache is under var www.html. There's nothing at the moment. Do you know how to get um, WordPress? So WordPress is so nice to store the latest version of WordPress at this reference. And now we are pulling all everything that we need for WordPress. Yes? local no yes and if you yeah we, we can talk some more about it afterwards um, so now we have all the Amazon files but obviously we have to untar it um, and that means unzip so latest tar. Cool. We have all our Amazon files. Um, I'm going to move um, those files to a subdirectory that I'm calling that. WCATL blog. Let me just make sure. Yep. And to make sure that's actually what I did, let's navigate 
into that directory and there we have our familiar WordPress files. Okay, what do we need to do now? We created our database, so we need to connect that to our WordPress system. And uh, WordPress comes by default, it comes with a sample WP config, um, WP config file. If I can spell. So WP config. So we're just moving, uh, making that available. So, and the way, how many of you guys have used v, v, VI? Okay. Whew. Okay, so Nino is a little bit more friendly, but so we need to, we need to uh, configure our, um, WP config file because we have to connect it to our um, SQL database that we just created. So let's scroll down. It makes it fairly easy. Remember we created the database and that database is WCATL blog. Um, we created root as the user. And guess what? You can see my password. <laughs> yeah, that's secure. Um, obviously, this is a demo. Um, if you use, um, if you're going to use um, Amazon's RDS, so the managed database server, they will provide you with an endpoint there. And so, instead of having local host, you can just paste it in there, and then it connects to the managed. Um, database. So let's save that. Okay, um, we do need to restart Apache for all of this to take effect. And uh, HTTP D restart. Okay, so the moment of truth. What do you think? You think we did it? Everything right? Okay. <laughs> I'm having fun. I'm not sure about you guys. Okay, so that's our, um, you know, our Apache page. Remember, I installed WordPress on slash WCATL blog. So to finish this, we need to go to. I love the way they do it these days with, if you don't provide a strong password, there's a checkbox to say, I agree, not something like that. Let's <laughs> confirm use of weak password. <laughs> Let's not make WordPress mad. Uh, we don't want it indexed. So, there we go. So uh, we have our, um, so in this case, we, you know, within a couple of minutes, you were able to spin up a Linux environment, install Apache, MySQL, PHP, get all the WordPress files, configure those WordPress files, and you have your WordPress instance running. Pretty cool. Um, we have two minutes, so I was, if we didn't have time, I wouldn't do this step, but I think we have time. So let me show you how you would actually now, um, I do need to save. Uh, yeah, let's do it. So, um, I just want to save my uh, password. Should never do that. Should use uh, LastPass. Um, so, how do we actually use a, a domain versus an IP? So, the way you do that is to use root uh, route 53 
to associate your, um, your IP to a domain. So as luck would have it, um, I've got some, uh, some domains lying around. So let's just use this one. We create a record set. Uh, where did I? Um, go to, oh, create, there we go. Um, no, no. Dum, dum, dum. Why don't I see that, Craig? Am I, what am I missing? Click on the record sets. On the record sets? Yeah. Ah, there we go. So um, we, we're creating an, an A record so to point the uh, domain to, to our IP. So let me just make sure I get the right one. So that's the A record that we're using. And just the IP, not the HTTP. So it, it may take a little bit of time, but let's see if we were able to uh, do that correctly. Um, so that is my one and obviously you, if you remember I installed it on a subdirectory um, obviously the next step is to go into <laughs> let's do that quickly let me get my strong password where do we set our um, URL Obviously, we need to change it because we installed it on an IP. And uh, I always forget that. Do you remember the 161.net? Uh, 161.net. It's kind of fun if you break this. Every, anybody done that? <laughs> Sir, yes. I think it's time for the next class. Okay. Very good. Um, thank you, everybody.